emotions, emotions, emotions. We all have them. But the real question is, do we know how to manage them and do we know how to use them effectively? And after watching Inside Out 2, there's some things that I want to talk to you guys about from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody. My name is Keandra Jackson, licensed therapist. If you are new here, hey, welcome to my channel. But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, I am going to give spoiler alerts. So if you have not watched Inside Out 2, press pause go watch it, and then come back so we can chat about it in the comment section. I wanna know all about what you thought about this movie. Tell me about your thoughts, your feelings. Did you think it was good? Did you like this one better than the first one? Because there's a lot of things that we have to break down here. Now, the first Inside Out came out all the way back in 2015, y'all. I don't know if you realize that. So we're almost at a decade later of Riley coming into being 13 years of age. And we know what happened happens at 13. Not only did she get braces, but she is also going through this thing called puberty. And honey, if you know anything about puberty, you know that that changes everything. And we see the OG emotions. OG means original gangster for the people who have not heard of that term before, but that's going to refer to the older emotions that she's had for a while. And then we're gonna transition and talk about the new ones that bust all up in the scene, ruining everything. So for the OG emotions, we have joy, we have anger, we have fear, we have disgust, and we have sadness. And we know with Riley, those were her ride or die emotions. They helped her manage things all the way up until age 13. They weren't perfect, but they helped her to go through the good, the bad, the ugly, the move, the transition, all of the things that she experienced in the first Inside Out. And then some new emotions came on the scene. We started to see anxiety, envy, embarrassment, boredom or wee wee or whatever joy called him and we also seen a little peekaboo which technically i don't think is an emotion but they did a few pop-ups of nostalgia i don't know about you guys but i can relate a lot to riley i think we all pretty much have gone through puberty unless you have some type of medical condition where that impacted your ability to transition into adulthood physiologically in a certain type of way but we know what it feels like to get all of the feels we know what it feels like to have good bad, the in-between, the emotions, your body doing all of these physiological change for the women, maybe around the time that you are starting to get a menstrual cycle for the men, I'm not even gonna go there, <laughs> but you guys know that there are some physiological changes that happens in our bodies. And with Riley, it was no different. So I wanna talk to you guys first about friendship. They focused a lot about friendship on this movie. And I'm not mad at it because according to Eric Erickson, I'm gonna give y'all a little psychology lesson. There are some things called the stages of development. And the stage that Riley is in, she is in that 12 to 18 years old stage, which typically results in identity versus confusion. So just like this whole movie already mentioned, she is trying to develop that sense of self. And the main question that she's asking herself throughout this whole entire movie is, who am I? And all of this is evident because we see the friendship island being bigger, more lively, more colorful than the family island. And if you remember back in 2015, the family island for Riley was a big thing. Her mom and her dad was all that she had essentially and her hockey team. But right now, all she's caring about is fitting in. Right now, all she's caring about is making new friends. All she's caring about is being liked or is she perceived as being cool by the other children. And just like with anybody else, she's either gonna fit in with the cool kids She's either going to not fit in with the cool kids or she's going to be in that weird phase that a lot of us experience where we don't really fit in with any group of individuals and we're trying to find who we are and it can create a little bit of discord because we don't fit into one little clique or one little subgroup or one little subcategory and it's a hard find when you're trying to figure out what your identity is when you're in that space. Now y'all may or may not agree with me but I don't think Riley was in with the cool kids initially. Her her friends, Grace and whatever the other girl's name was, her two friends, they were a little bit younger. They're still in middle school-ish. 
they were kind of nerdy, geeky. They got braces and little braids. And, you know, I think even Riley befriended one of them because one of the girls stood up in front of the class and she dropped all of the coins during her presentation. And so she was a little bit clumsy. And so she didn't necessarily fit in with the cool kids off top. I think Riley and her two little friends were, I don't want to call them nerds. And there's nothing wrong with being a nerd, but they did not fit in with the cool kids. That was evident to me. But we saw that switch and change when Riley experienced high school students, right? She tried to figure out how to fit in with this when she was so used to hanging around her two friends that are not seen as the coolest. And even during this phase, when they were on the drive to go to the hockey uh, summit or wherever they were going, competition or practice or whatever it's called, and they dissected the facial expressions. I don't know if y'all seen that scene when they were in the car and her friends told Riley that they weren't going to be going to high school with her and she felt the type of way. She looked at them and they looked at her and the eyes got weird and they said that they were keeping something from her. Like It was a whole thing, but social cues and facial expressions are a huge deal when you are 12, 13, 14 year old, you're really looking at people's eye contact, their body language, their facial expressions, what they're doing, what they're not doing. And so I'm glad that they highlighted that little moment in the car because that is indicative of something that would really happen with teenagers. The second thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is that emotions can work together or they can work against each other. Let's break it down. In Inside Out 2, we all seen that emotions have their proper place and their proper time when they are needed. Now, I understand that Riley's livelihood is impacted on her having good experiences, but I think the OG emotions tried their best to keep her happy, to keep her, you know, eating well and sleeping well and, you know, just having this really beautiful life. But they also kind of did her a disservice because a lot of the time and energy was focused on her being joyful or being happy and joy who seems to be in control at the console and managing things up there, she tried her best to make sure that Riley was full of joy all the time. So she pushed sadness away in the first one and didn't want her to touch anything and didn't want her to be around. But I think at the end of the first movie, she realized how important it was for positive and negative emotions to coexist. So basically what I'm saying is that you can't be joyful 100% of the time. If you experience somebody who's always happy, who's always joyous, who's always just peachy keen, 100%, that person's lying, that person's fake. It's not possible to be a certain emotion 100% of the time. And it's also not healthy for you to do so either. And that's where we see things like toxic positivity or somebody being like perfect Patty. And you know, I'm doing this a lot, but y'all get the point. We see people like perfect Patty and all of these things. And so we even experience people in real life outside of this movie where they are a little bit more sad often, or they do experience anxiety more often. And that is kind of encompassing of all of who they are. And they don't have a range of emotions like we typically should have. But this is why I say there shouldn't be a thing as good emotions versus bad emotions. That's why you'll often hear me say positive emotions and negative emotions, because sometimes we label sadness and anger and frustration and annoyance as bad emotions. And we just want the feel good emotion, the happiness, the joy, the excitement, the elatedness. <laughs> we want all of those emotions, but we don't realize that all of them serve a beautiful purpose. We don't fully know what joy is until you have had moments of sadness. You don't fully know what anxiety and fear looks like until you really experience peace and calmness, right? And so I think in order for you to experience an emotion, whether that's positive or negative, you also should be able to experience the opposite of that thing to really fully embrace what it really is. The third thing that I wanna talk about is suppressed emotions. And so far, if you are enjoying this content and you love videos like this, please make sure to like, 
comment, subscribe, send this to a friend or someone who loves the Inside Out franchise, who you think might benefit from this video. It will mean the world to me. So with these suppressed emotions, we see that in this movie, these emotions are basically pushed down, they are pushed to the side, they're kind of outcasted, and they're literally sent to a completely separate place inside of Riley's brain where nobody is really there. It's like this exclusive section off vault that's under lock and key with security guards and nobody is allowed to be in there and it's dark and it's just completely away. And what that place is, it's emotions that we don't like. It's emotions that feel uncomfortable. It's emotions that we haven't addressed 100% and we can have suppressed emotions and we also can have suppressed memories but we're not talking about that in this video. But even what we see with the OG emotions is that they broke out of the vault, right? They were classified as suppressed emotions. They were classified as like, oh, we don't need those anymore. Riley is not gonna have any use for those things. But once they got out of that jar, once they got out of that vault, they were able to do exactly what they were meant to do. That tells me that no matter how much you suppress and push things down and don't deal with them, honey, they will pop back up. They will show back up. They will go exactly where they was before until you fully are able to deal with them. So please, if you are someone who suppresses emotions or memories, make sure that you allow them to bubble back up and manage them effectively at the surface. Yes, it's uncomfortable. Yes, you might even need assistance from a licensed therapist or a coach or somebody to walk you through that process, but I can guarantee it is going to help you mentally and physically when you address things that need to be addressed. The fourth thing that we seen that was a huge thing in this movie was talking about a sense of self. And when I think about a sense of self, what I really think about is harmony. Y'all know that's my word. I'm not big on balance, you know. I'm big on things being harmonious, essentially meaning giving every single thing that needs to be given weight, understanding that it has its proper timing, understanding that there's going to be an ebb and a flow, understanding that one thing might shine in this season and another thing might have to take a back seat, but that doesn't make this thing that's in the back seat less effective or less needed. Positive emotions, the negative emotions, the negative and positive experiences, all of those things make up who Riley is. All of those things make up who you and I are. So it's like two things coexisting. Y'all know I always say both and over here. So you're going to have the happiness, with the sadness. You're going to have the confidence with the self-doubt. You're going to have the boredom with the excitement and understanding, like I already mentioned, that both of those things can coexist in a world because we don't know what one of those things would truly feel like if we didn't experience the opposite thing too. A sense of self is embracing all of those things at the same time. It's literally saying, just like we heard in Inside Out 2, I'm a great friend, but sometimes I mess up. I am really smart, but there's moments where I don't do well in school. I really am confident, but there's some moments when I doubt myself, right? Understanding that there's harmony in between all of these things and that you won't be this perfect person, but you can acknowledge the good, the bad, and everything in between. I think what they were trying to portray in this movie is that when something is focused on too much, you're focusing too much on the sadness, you're focusing too much on the joy, you're focusing on too much of the embarrassment, it causes everything to be off kilter. It causes everything to be out of whack. It causes everything to feel a type of way. And that's when we saw Riley had that panic attack when she was on the hockey team and they were playing and practicing or whatever. And she was trying to, you know, hit all the goals and the coach sat her butt down because she was doing team too much. And she sat down in that little cubicle. I don't even know what's it called. Excuse me. If you're a hockey fan, she started to have shortness of breath, her thoughts, started racing. Oh, I'm not good enough. I should have done better. I did this wrong. I'm not the best, right? She started ruminating on things. She expressed those things physiologically, sweating, shortness of breath. She literally at one point put her head in between her knees to try to grasp 
so a sense of air, essentially. And so it was because everything was going haywire in her brain. That's the moment when anxiety took over. Remember when the anxiety was on the console and he was going around crazy and he felt like he couldn't even control himself to take his hands off of the buttons and to do and release control? And while I'm here, I feel like there's a spiritual lesson in this as well. Some of the things that we hold on to and some of the things that we experience that may or may not even been our fault. There are some things that are passed down to us generationally in our family, in our lineage, whether that is mental health issues, whether that is physiological issues. And sometimes if we don't address things at the root it has such a hold in our life that it's going to have damaging effects. And that's exactly what we saw when anxiety took over, <laughs> when all of the new emotions came in and overthrew, <laughs> overthrew, is that the word? Overthrown? Y'all know what I'm trying to say. They overthrew the OG emotions. And essentially they were in a place where they didn't have harmony within themselves and understanding that everybody serves their place and everybody is needed at certain times. And it's okay to take a back seat when needed, but it's okay to step up when you need to too. And the last thing that I wanna talk about before I give my final thoughts on this is improvements. We've seen a really powerful thing when embarrassment showed improvements at the end. I don't know if y'all noticed that. Embarrassment showed improvements at the end of the movie. So remember when embarrassment was first introduced, he was this big old dude. He had like a little hoodie or a sweat jacket on and he would hide himself. He barely spoke, his hands were sweaty. He didn't like to be talked to. He didn't like to make eye contact, right? And so we seen him in what we would call like a very immature state in regards to embarrassment. But by the end of the movie, he had a little moment where he was smiling and talking real quick. And even Joy was like, look at embarrassment. Okay, we see you, great job. That really showed me that we can improve upon our emotions if we really wanna put in the work, time, and energy to do so. We could be dealing with anger on a very, very high level and it has taken over our lives, but we're working on that thing. We're doing better, we're making improvements, we're going to therapy, we're, we're walking away, we're taking breaks, we're doing what needs to be done. We won't physically harm somebody. And now we're in a space where we're able to manage ourselves and count to 10 and take some deep breaths. That has to be acknowledged because that is absolutely some amazing improvement. So please believe that emotions can be improved upon if you choose to do the work. So my final thoughts on this is that this kid movie was a nine out of 10. I enjoyed it. I was laughing in the movie theater. I probably was one of the only ones laughing. I probably was the only one in the movie theater who went without a kid. I literally went by myself, <laughs> but I knew I had to show up and watch this movie because I knew that it was going to not only be helpful for the younger generation coming up and helping them to identify and manage their emotions, but I really do believe that this is a great movie for adults too. Think about how many adults don't know how to express their emotions. Think about how many of us were never sat down as a child and said, okay, this is what's gonna be happening in your body. Sometimes you're gonna get mad. Sometimes you'll be sad. It's okay, this is what we'll do. Nobody sat down with me and talked about emotions in that way, right? And so I'm sure that that probably isn't a common thing for a lot of other people as well, even though we are in a generation where they are a little bit more in touch with their feelings and their emotions and mental health and managing that is important. I do believe that a lot of grown adults should be watching this movie too, because it can help them manage how they deal with their emotions, but also how they deal with their children's emotions too. And we see little pockets and little times where they pan out to Riley's dad or to Riley's mom. And we went inside their brains and seen the emotions that were happening in them as well. So I love how that came through because that allowed kids to see like, mommy and daddy has emotions too. It's not just about me. So I hope and pray that there is an inside out three, an inside out four, inside out five, whatever, however many we need to do to track Riley's progress over time, I think it should be done. Kind of like Toy Story. Remember how we followed him all the way through, you know, his process and when he went off to school and things of that nature? I feel like they should do the same thing with Riley. I'm curious of how this would pan out and play out if 
Riley was a boy. How would this look, or how would they showcase it with emotions then? That's interesting, right? Something interesting to think about. So I would love, hopefully it don't take another 10 years for them to make an Inside Out 3, but I would love to follow her in the next phase of her life, maybe when she starts dating or when she does go to high school or when she does enter into another stage of development like we've already mentioned. So thank you so much for watching another review video on my channel. Make sure to stick around and watch some more of my movie and TV show reviews. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Be blessed.